welcome to Insights into Insurance from the A-Team at Americana Insurance Group. All information provided is educational in nature and not intended to be acted upon without first consulting the appropriately licensed professional. It's a Saturday morning and that means it's time for our Insights into Insurance program here on 1450 KATE. Mike White is your host along with Tom Sorensen from American Insurance via the social distancing and he stretched his phone line as far as he could from his office in his home. Good morning, Tom. Well, good morning, Mike. Yes, uh, and uh, so I, I'm still in this situation where I don't have to see your face, which, oh, darn, that's been kind of nice. But uh, <laughs> uh, oh, so much for my radio show anymore. I'm probably just, huh with that just, comment. Just remember, who can control the airwaves? <laughs> Not yeah. yourself. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, basically, Mike, today what we're going to talk about, and oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for our listeners, but there's reasons. Um, I'm kind of on burnout of hearing about COVID nineteen. Okay, um, even though it's really important, okay, but I am on burnout. However, I also feel it is our duty uh, and uh, to, on this show is to update you on risks involved as this pandemic creates situations, okay? So with that, obviously, we're going to talk about some things that the pandemic and uh, COVID-19 has created. And not only on the cyber attacks and the cyber risks, Tom, but it's difficult for families that aren't used to mom or dad or maybe both being home at the same time, and they want to play with the animals. And mom's trying to do a conference call, and dad's trying to do a you know a cyber call, and it can be challenging. But most importantly, just keep in mind, folks, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We will get through this. Uh, it's a, a changing of times, and we kind of have to adapt of what we have and uh, where we're working from. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of folks are working out of their home. Right, and that's what our show is going to be about, is remotely working at home and what are the situations and what are the risks of um, mainly cybersecurity with that. Because right now it is uh, getting to be quite a topic in uh, I think the crooks are out there looking to, exactly. to hack. Exactly, and they always try to hit, you know, at our most vulnerable time because you know what they are. They're bad people. So anyway, so what I want to do is introduce to everybody Alex Spencer, and he is the technical account manager at Pantheon Computers. Hey, good morning, Alex. Good morning, gentlemen. How Thanks for you? having me. You bet, you bet. Thanks for coming on board. Uh, well, why don't you uh, tell us about yourself and uh, so that people understand why you're going to be on this program today, too. So, Sure. Uh, so a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in Fairmont, and now I get to call uh, Mankato my home here. Uh, but uh, I've been with uh, Pantheon Computers as a technical account manager uh, now going on six years. So, um, you know, with how fast technology changes, uh, that means, uh, you know, a variety of things. But uh, my current role uh, means that I get to work uh, with business owners, executives, uh, managers of, of businesses, um, and we do a little bit of planning and strategizing technology, uh, making sure that, you know, technology is working well for businesses. Uh, but then I also get to do a lot of education, too. Um, and I think I think that's the purpose of this conversation is around, you know, you only know what you know, right? Great. Um, so what, what don't we know about cybersecurity today? Um, right. And so that's a huge component of what I, what I get to do today. And, Alex, one of the things that a lot of folks are, are concerned about is, you know, is the Internet, is that going to crash? And I know uh, with distance learning uh, for those individuals, it's not so much maybe the Internet part of it as it is maybe the programming side of it that they're seeing a lot of the, the issues crash. But I, I've got to believe that the Internet activity since this pandemic started has uh, just gone through the roof. Oh, yeah, certainly, right? I mean, we're all uh, now, I shouldn't say we're all, but most of us are working from home, right? And, and uh, 
some of our some of our internet connections we've noticed um, aren't aren't quite what they used to be, right? Because there's a lot of us that still use uh, kind of a shared network, and so um, certainly less of a risk that that's going to go down. But we've seen the effects of that. Uh, but you're you're 100 percent right that the software vendors are really what's feeling the pain there. So as far uh, as apps uh, have oh, crashed know, and stopped working. Yeah. So as far as cybersecurity, Alex, um, why is there such a heightened alert now that people are at home uh, re- working sure. remotely? You know, I I really take the thousand foot view on that and step step back to think about uh, so cybersecurity in general. And when I look at cybersecurity in general, what a hacker is doing is that they want to play into fear. Um, fear is what gets us to take actions a lot of times. Um, you know, it, it might even be the same in your world, Tom, right? Like, I might be afraid that someday my house is going to burn down, so that's why I buy a certain insurance policy. Absolutely. Um, same thing in the cybersecurity world, right? I might be afraid that someday something's going to happen to me, so I buy antivirus. That then carries into current events. So the reason that this is a heightened awareness is because um, we're all, we all have this kind of heightened fear about what's going on, and the hacker can play into that. Um, and that's how they get us to take actions. Okay, so give us an example. Like, I know that there's a whole bunch of different, uh, what do I want to say, names of different type of hacking that is going on. So can you give us some? Yeah, certainly. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to throw a few things out there, and this could be a probably a three-hour conversation yeah. about it. But right. uh, <laughs> a lot of what we're talking about is uh, is age-old uh, tactics that they're using with a kind of a modern or a, uh, a current spin on it, right? So um, some of the things that we're talking about are phishing, uh, which is uh, an email that comes to you in your mailbox um, that looks legitimate, but there is something in that email uh, that either brings you to a, a website or has you download something that compromises you, right? So one of the things that we're seeing today is bad Zoom links. You know, a lot of us are using Zoom for video conferencing meetings or, you know, flavor to taste, pick, pick your conference call of choice, Zoom or go to meeting or whatever it may be. So what a hacker will do is they will send you an email that looks like an invitation to a Zoom meeting, right? Um, and it could even come from what looks like internally. It might come from somebody that looks like your boss, and they'll send that meeting to you in a link. Um, and it's when you click on that link um, and download that software then that you've compromised your system um, or you've compromised some information about you in that way. Um, so that's that's one of the things that that we're seeing right now is any of those current softwares that we're using can be uh, turned into a phishing email, uh, exactly. some way to trick you. Is that also called Zoom bombing? Uh, is that uh, also as a term? Yeah, that's a good point. Zoom bombing is a little bit different. So Zoom bombing is uh, a little bit more around. I am uh, setting up a Zoom meeting, but I might have not set it up properly. And so what Zoom bombing is, is it allows, or it's a way that hackers can, uh, what they call, break into your virtual meeting. So somebody can join your virtual meeting, a hacker can join your virtual meeting, um, and, and mostly their goal around that is to elicit more fear. Um, you know, they, they might just post uh, things in the comments, they might jump in and say some uh, profanity and things like that. Um, but they're doing this into corporate meetings, and they're doing this into education meetings um, if, if those things aren't quite set up properly. Let's take a quick break, uh, Tom and Alex, uh, on our insights into insurance program this morning. And uh, one of the professionals uh, on this topic, Alex Spencer with uh, Pantheon Computers, we'll talk more about things to look for and to be aware of as you're working from home with a lot of our listeners as well. So, guys, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about remote access and home security cyber attacks on our Insights into Insurance program here on Kate 1450. Americana Insurance Group has been a leader in providing quality protection for customers in southern Minnesota and northern Iowa, with its roots dating back to 1899. Hi, this is Angela Collis. I'm excited to announce the opening of our new location in Wells, Minnesota. Americana Insurance always strives for total customer satisfaction and understanding our customers' coverage needs. We make sure that you are covered today. Stop by and see me in our new Wells office on Highway 109. Americana Insurance. We're the A-Team. 
Welcome back to our second half of our Insights into Insurance program here on 1450 KATE. Mike Whitus, I'm just sitting back listening, Tom Sorensen on the phone, and also Alex Spencer with Pantheon Computers. And Tom, uh, there's still some other cybersecurity, and Alex, that maybe we can touch on as far as folks need to be aware of the crooks are out there on the cyber end of things. Yeah, Alex, kind of just briefly describe a few other things that are going on out there also uh, with with this uh, situation that we are in right now. Yeah, so to, to be super brief, um, hackers are smart. They're trying to they're trying to hit you where where you interact with. So some of the other things to uh, think about are, you know, we see some of these COVID nineteen tracking maps, uh, you know, online, and and they might bring you to something to download an app on your cell phone. That's a really common um, uh, way to get to actually download malware on a cell phone today. Is you might get a text message saying, "Hey, check out this tracking map." Um, so be vigilant of that. Also be vigilant of uh, just other people, you know, requesting personal information about you. Um, you know, some people are, our hackers are, are making phone calls, uh, they're sending emails, uh, requesting, you know, saying that they might be a government agency and requesting some information about you, right? And they're going to use, uh, you know, this, this COVID-19 thing or try to leverage that um, in a way that, that gets you to uh, believe that to be true. Um, so. Be careful on social media, what you're clicking on, what you're downloading. Uh, be careful what information you give out. Uh, really, the rule of thumb is any of this kind of information that we're receiving or reading, just take a step back, think twice before interacting with it. Yes. So what can people do and companies and their employees do to protect themselves with this? Yeah. Most of this is around education, right, Tom? I mean, yeah. we've talked about that in the past, right? Uh, yes. None of this is inherently stoppable. <laughs> so right. that's the unfortunate side in the IT world. Um, so what we really encourage is just educate yourself. Educate yourself, educate your staff. Uh, just make sure that everybody knows kind of what are the things to be looking out for so that staff are cognitive of as they interact with these and, things, uh, what Alex, they should or shouldn't be doing. Just to kind of go on top of that, uh, we are we subscribe to your services. You're our IT provider, um, Pantheon Computers is, and we actually have a monthly. I believe it's monthly, isn't it, Alex? That yep. sent out for us to do training to uh, for us to be more aware of cyber attacks and what type of cyber attacks to be looking for. And so Pantheon sends us out every month, and so our employees get it's kind of on top of their mind uh, when something comes in and they say, uh, I don't know if that looks right. First of all, we can send it right to Pantheon for that email and say, hey, is this a legit email? And they, in 99% of the time, it's not. Okay. And, and then also, too, um, so our our uh, employees go through this training, Pantheon actually sends out, and I believe it's you, Alex, that sends out <laughs> uh, test you, kind of test us to, that you, yeah. send, you send actually bad emails out. Well, they don't, they aren't hacking emails, they're just an email that would be considered a hack, but you can yep. test us, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of a sick fun for me, Tom. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Uh, yeah, we send out those simulated phishing emails, right? They would yep. look like just what a hacker would send you, and, and we help your staff see if they can identify it or not. And, um, and if somebody, one of my employees or myself, clicks on that, you can say, hey, this is what happened. Let's discuss it. I, I'm not yep. there. That employee is not going to get in trouble. We're just going to talk about it and say, hey, next time let's try to look at this and why did you click on it or what, what, why shouldn't you have clicked on it. Or yep. something like that, so. And a lot of exactly. folks have a lot of uh, time on their hands, and they get bored sitting at that computer all day long, and all of a sudden they just start clicking away, and that's where they get in trouble. And, of course, Alex, uh, for those folks that have more questions or want uh, to have you involved in their IT department, uh, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, easiest way is going to be to find us on our website. Kind of all of our contact information is there. So just www.pantheoncomputers.com. Uh, we have a whole bunch of white papers up on our site and things like that. So if you want to find out more information or get more educated, there's some information out there. And all of our contact information is out there as well to, to get in touch with us. So. 
And, of course, we didn't even touch on the insurance side of it, Tom, but that's well, also another thing. Yeah, well, just so you know, uh, to my business clients, uh, if you have questions on cybersecurity uh, coverage, we do offer that, and they can uh, let us know if they have any um, interest in that. And some of uh, our policies automatically come with it. So uh, they can give us a call at 507-377-2000, or they don't have to be a client. You can just call us and or go to our website at americainsurance.com or email me at insights at americainsurance.com for a question on this show. All right. Alex, thanks for uh, joining. We appreciate it. Uh, Tom, as always, both of you guys, please be safe, and uh, we will get through this together. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, and as always, uh, we'll, we'll talk uh, We'll talk next Saturday. You too, Mike. You take care, and Alex, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, guys. That's our Insights into Insurance program for this Saturday morning here on Kate 1450. <music> You've been listening to Insights into Insurance from the Americana Insurance Group. All information provided is educational in nature and not intended to be acted upon without first consulting the appropriately licensed professional.